Some database engines offer additional feature that makes it easier to manage data and databases and to provide additional security for your database. Amazon RDS uses option groups to enable and configure these features. An option group can specify features called options that are available for a particular Amazon RDS database instance. Options can have settings that specify how the options works. When you associate a DB instance with an option group, the specified options and option settings are enabled for that database instance. By default, RDS provides an empty default option group for each new database instance. You can modify or delete this default option group. But keep in mind that new option groups derive the settings from the default option group. So there are two types of option groups. You have the persistent and permanent options. Persistent options can be removed from an option group while the database instances are associated with the option group. You must deassociate all DB instances from the option group before a persistent option can be removed from the option group. Permanent options such as the TDE option for Microsoft SQL Server transparent data encryption can never be removed from an option group. You can change the option group of a DB instance that is using the option group. However, the option group associated with the DB instance must include the same permanent option. The following is a summary of the options available for Oracle DB instance. So you can pause the video now and take a brief look. So let's take a look at how you can modify or add an option group for your database instance. In this portion of the lecture, we are going to be taking a look at how we can create and modify and assign an option group to a database. So this is the main RDS dashboard, our main console. So if you are not on this console, right, you can access it from the search. So you'd search RDS, like RDS. Then you can select your DB instances, right? I would have noticed the parameter to my left would be still in place. So select options group. So you have a bunch of options group here. In your case, you will only be seeing one option group. And that is the one that was created by default when you were creating the database. So this is the one which was created. How do I know? Because I created a standard edition, right? So I have the SE and it was version 15. So if I was supposed to select this option group, I'll see the database that it is assigned to. So select option group again. Now to create an option group, select create group. Specify a name for your option group. So you can call it SQL 2019. So I'm just going to copy and paste the same name for the description. Now choose your database engine. So it's SQL Server SE because this is SQL Server Standard Edition, right? And if it was the Enterprise Edition, then I'll select EE for Enterprise. If it was Express, then it will be EX. And if it was the web version, I'll select web. So I'm going to select SE. The version which I'm using is, C is version 15. So select the version that you are using. Then select create. So the option group was successfully created. Now let's view the option group. You can select the view option group from here as well as you can refresh and then you'll see the option group down below. So select so select the option group. So when you scroll down, there are no options assigned. So to add an option to this group, select add option. Then for the option name, you can expand the option. You will see the list of options that are available to you. So MSDTC will allow you to perform distributed transaction. The OLEDB Oracle will allow you to create a link server to an Oracle database, right? And the SQL Server Audit will allow you to audit your SQL Server and then export logs to your S3 bucket. So for now, we are going to select SQL Server Backup and Restore. This option allows you to backup your database to Amazon S3 as well as restore databases from Amazon S3. So we are going to select this option. For the IAM role, you will select a role that will give you permission to access the S3 bucket. So without the IAM role, even though you grant the option, you need a S3 role now that has the permissions and the S3 bucket. So here I have an RDS S3 role which was previously created, right? So for now, so for now you can select the AWS service role for RDS. 
So later on in this course, I'll show you how to create a S3 integration rule whenever we are doing backups and restore. So don't worry about this portion of it for now because you will not be using it immediately. For this role to take effect, the database will need to be rebooted so we can schedule it for the next maintenance window or we can choose to apply immediately. So I'm going to let it stay for the next maintenance window then select add option group. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a look at parameters group.